punch, punch, hype, hype. Yeah, that's what this company's built on, hype. And I am amazed, amazed that people are throwing their money at this guy, Joseph Collins. This guy boasts that he was once homeless. That's not a selling point. Wouldn't you rather hear a CEO talk about how they majored in business administration or went to film school? And I read this review, which I take it with a grain of salt because it's the internet. Who knows who wrote this review? But after watching this uh, State of the Union speech by Joseph Collins, I tend to believe this review. And so in this State of the Union speech by the CEO, Joseph Collins, all grandiose hype and no substance. You know, at one point in this, this pep rally, Mr. Collins said, my gift is knowing talent. My, my gift is understanding who has gifts. Yeah, aren't we all good at identifying talent? But when it comes to a CEO running a company, you know what I want? Someone who has the gift of making companies profitable. Someone with a, a track record of delivering movies by keeping them under budget and then showing a profit for investors and within a reasonable time frame. That's what I care about, not an empty pep talk. Joseph Collins says he's produced over 200 videos and movies. Well, then certainly he has a track record by now. What were uh, the titles of these releases and what were the, the financials for these productions? How much was spent and how much revenue was generated? But so in the speech, I, I was hoping to hear about revenue figures, something, anything about sales and expenditures, uh, details about what affiliates, what markets Punch TV Studios is in. Or is it still just Los Angeles, Houston, Beaumont, Texas, Columbus, Ohio, Pensacola, and Mobile, Alabama? How are you going to generate $1.3 billion in revenue if you're only on in those markets? And, and, and by the way, have you seen the picture quality of Punch TV in Los Angeles? <laughs> it looks like they're using some pretty antiquated equipment. And what's going on with uh, the Punch TV shows? How's uh, Diva Glamas doing? H how much did it cost to produce this show? And what's the revenue? Is this show getting picked up by another network on, on BET, on Spike, on E? You know, I checked on YouTube. The most viewed promo clip for the show has almost got... Almost 2,000 views. Uh-oh. <laughs> so so wh wh where's the financials? Where's the beef? How exactly is the money from investors being spent? You ever watch that show, Shark Tank? What are the first words out of their mouth? What are your sales? And if they don't have any sales, they're, they're like, I'm out. I'm out. That's, that's why companies with no revenue are speculation, a, a hope and a prayer. But yet Joseph Collins has boldly stated that Punch TV Studios is a company that's on track to generate $1.3 billion in revenue. Okay. And then what about Joseph Collins' salary? Has Joseph Collins put himself on payroll yet? Because if you read the Articles of Incorporation, it provides, among other things, for Mr. Collins to earn an initial salary of a quarter million dollars, and which last time I checked from April 5, 2016 to October 5, 2017, Punch raised about five and a half million dollars. Uh, for startup companies that have funded between $1 million and $5 million, the average salary, according to, I guess, a 2013 study by Compass.co, the average salary was only about $45,755. For companies that raised between five million and ten million, the average salary was sixty-two thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Now, obviously, CEOs are investing their time when they launch a company, so they want to be paid. But if and when a CEO is paid a lot, this shortens the the runway, so to speak, when it comes to a company becoming profitable or not. If a company is hemorrhaging money, that's not that's not a good thing. Eventually, you dig a hole so deep that you can't get out. So Joseph Collins says that this is, this is not about him. Well, keep an eye on a salary versus the capitalization of the company. As they say, pay attention to what people do, not what they say. What else? Punch TV had its share offering under Regulation A suspended for nine months by the SEC for providing misrepresented and unaudited financial statements. 
Punch said that there was an administrative error regarding the qualifications of an accountant, which I talk about in my first video about Punch. Punch then went through several other accountants. Finally, by the fourth accountant, uh, was able to provide the financial statements required by the SEC. But Punch TV's assets were reduced by 51%. So for, for all of you early investors, you invested in, in less of a company than you thought you were investing in. Isn't that wonderful? And so what was the, the company response to this train wreck? We urge our current shareholders not to be concerned about this error. Several factors support the conclusion that this suspension does not affect punch its operations or the potential value of its stock. Not be concerned. You're trying to raise $50 million and, and you're now banned for uh, eight months or nine months from, from selling shares to investors who are not accredited. <laughs> and this pretty much shuts out, I don't know, like 95% of the U.S. population. And as a shareholder, I should not be concerned about this. And you know how the stain on the company, and you don't think this is going to scare off new investors or at least slow down your goal of raising $50 million? You know, if you, you make money later instead of sooner, this lowers your annualized return on investment. But no, don't be concerned. And also, you see what he did here? He never addressed the issue of false and misleading representations. How did this happen and why? <laughs> he did a, a Kansas City shuffle. He dodged the issue or, or whoever crafted this response. But uh, I hope investors don't get punched in the face by the stock. Now, now, if you bought shares like this was just like a GoFundMe project and you wanted to donate to help one guy, then fine. But if you're investing your savings in any, in any non-traded penny stock, uh, you better hope that if and when there's an actual listing of the stock to trade on the, the over-to-the-counter bulletin board or on the NASDAQ, as somebody is claiming that Punch is going to be listed on the NASDAQ, uh, that this company gets so overhyped that you can cash out for a, for a profit, hopefully. That, that would be a best case scenario for investors, in my opinion. Uh, have you heard the phrase, buy on the rumor, sell on the news? Uh, take, for example, California, uh, which legalized marijuana on January 1st of 2018. And even though everyone knew this law was going to go into effect, uh, there were all these Johnny-come-lately naive investors who flocked to buy up shares of, for example, MJMA uh, during the week leading up to the official date of legalization. And shares spiked up to like $17 a share by the first day of trading for 2018, but then just plummeted back down to about you know, $10 a share. Similar situation with IPOs. Look at none, or, none other than Urban Network Television. February 6, 1995, shares uh, apparently opened at $150 a share, but then dropped down to $12.50, then to $2. Today, they're at like $0.06. Cents. By the way, th this should be a wake-up call that the idea of starting up a, a TV network has already been done before. It flopped. But I guess some people suddenly have high hopes for Punch TV Studios. And that's even though the whole TV medium has been in decline. Millennials are cutting the cable. They don't watch TV. You know, there's a study, uh, the average time spent by Americans watching TV per day over the last five years is down from four hours and 10 minutes to three hours and 47 minutes. But again, hopefully the stock gets so hyped that if you bought shares at $1, maybe, maybe you can make money. Heck, you can make money off of pump and dump stocks. Ride the crazy train and sometimes you can actually make money.